Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is CMG Talk and this is Catherine Gallagher. I'm going live right now and I'm inviting you to mind your words. <laughs> okay, when I put that up, I thought, oh, I wonder if people are going to go, whoa, mind, mind my words. What does that mean? Okay, mind our words. Our words are so powerful. Power. We give our power away, don't we? You're like, I don't give my power away. But we can do with words. When we speak, when we talk, even verbally and non-verbal cues. You know, they say silence can say a lot, can't it? We can speak a lot, we can say a lot just by an expression, what we do, what we say, what we think, how we are. Minding our words, being aware of our words, how we think and how we reframe things. Our self-talk is so important. How do you think about things? How do you reframe things within your mindset? When you think about your scripts that you have going on in your mind, do you take time to review them? Do you clear and declutter the scripts that you have in your mind, in your brain? Or do you say, to Catherine, I don't really think about it. I just have my thoughts. My thoughts are my thoughts. I go along with them. Because remember, if you're listening to the podcasts and episodes that I'm putting down, that we have the same thoughts pretty much every day. If you keep repeating the same thoughts and they are amazing and wonderful and helpful and really positive and they're really supporting us and they're getting us going every day, they're helping us to be able to drive our life forward and everything is going, woohoo, that's great. But if you get up every morning and you're like, what day is it today? Yikes, Friday. What have I got planned? Well, same old, same old. Just need to get up. Guess to have work. Um, nope. <laughs> or, yep. Exercise. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I really should. Should I? Yeah. Nah, can't really be bothered. No. Nope. I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, maybe. What will I have to eat? Oh, who really cares? What have I got in? Nothing much. Hmm. Right, maybe just whatever's there. Just grab something. Wash. Hmm. Think somebody will notice if I don't wash. Oh, I'll just use the deodorant. Right, okay. Doesn't really matter anyway because I'm working from home today, so who really cares? Nobody's going to notice. Getting to plan this weekend anyway. Am I going anywhere? Don't know. Maybe I might. I might message someone. Or maybe I'll just stay in this weekend. Can't really be bothered anyway. If this is the kind of mindset that you have going on through your head, or is it something like, okay, I'm looking outside today. I'm going to go out. I'm going to get a quick walk around the building to snow or I'm going to go out in the park and I'm going to have a walk or I'm going to sit outside and do a bit of mindfulness and meditation or, you know, you go out in the garden or if I don't have a garden, you know, I'll just open the window and get some fresh air. Oh, my goodness, it's bright. Oh, that's amazing. It's so bright outside. I'm going to put on some music or I'm going to just sit and just going to enjoy. And I know... There's noise going on around me. I'm just going to... I'm going to take a minute. You can press. And I'm going to breathe in. I'm saying to myself. And I'm going to say something to myself. An affirmation. Today, and every day, and every way, today, I'm going to be grateful for five things. I'm going to pay attention to five things throughout this day that I'm really grateful for. 
small things are going to move me forward in the day. Five gratitudes. I'm going to reach out to someone today and I'm going to connect with them. Might have something planned. I wonder. I'll need to check and see if I do. But I'm going to set my day with purpose. I'm going to check and see what I'm having to eat. But I want to eat healthier. So I might have some fruit. I might have cereal. I might have porridge. I might have... I'm going to make sure that I have a smoothie or something that's energising me, that's going to give me the right purpose. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check in with people or I'm going to get myself started. I'm going to work on my mindset to keep my mindset in that right flow, keeping forward. I might put on music to dance, keep myself going. But my mindset is going to be in a positive way. And if somebody says good morning, I'm going to go, it is, isn't it? It is a good morning. It's Friday. But it's a good morning, just like every morning. I'm going to say something positive back. And I'm going to say, thanks. Yeah, good morning to you too. And I'm going to pay attention to that. And I'm going to walk that in as a gratitude. Thanks for that. That's really nice to be noticed to be visible from working from home I'm going to check in with people I'm going to send a message round to people I'm going to see if we can have a catch up so I don't feel disconnected I'm going to feel a sense of belonging I'm going to have my regular micro breaks if I'm working if I'm not working I'm going to check in with somebody so I don't feel disconnected even if I'm going out to put the bin out I'm going to check in with a family neighbour. I'm going to wave to somebody walking past. I'm going to connect with someone. I'm going to check my mind script. I'm going to keep myself in that better frame of mind. Being aware of how we tune in. Mindfully present. If you start being mindfully present of the scripts that we have in the day. How we connect and communicate as we go along, it makes the difference. It makes the difference. This morning, I was having conversations. I was doing business conversations. I was checking in. I was booking things in. I was having people, you know, I was on a phone for an hour waiting to get through and music do 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 <laughs> and it was and I could have been going oh pick up the phone I could have been doing all of that that's not going to set me up for the day so I put it on loudspeaker I went off and did other things kept myself organised made sure that I was keeping myself in a good frame of mind and then when the person answered, I then was like, okay, give me a second so I can focus. I've been hanging on for 50 minutes and I've just been off doing other things. This is what I want to talk about. And then I got on with what I was doing. I could have went, I've been on the phone for 50 minutes. I could have done all of that. It might have been factual, but you know, the person on the other end of the phone We'd quite rightly have said, well, I'm doing my job. Not my, you know, anything I can do about this. And it would have distracted away from the point in hand. I had the opportunity to give feedback. So I gave constructive feedback. Made suggestions. Whether it'll be taken up or not, I have no control over that. Kept my mind in the right place. Then we're off. It's Friday. If you've been listening to my episodes, you'll probably hear that a lot of Fridays I meet up with my father. I'm blessed still to have my father. So we met up, right, went for shopping. Now they've changed the outline of the store. Now many people don't like change. 
I don't really mind change. Right? I adapt quite, quite easily. Well, because, I guess because of what I do. I do adapt a lot easily to change. I shouldn't probably say that, shouldn't I not? But um, I tend to kind of go, right, okay, orientate myself. What am I doing? And I pick up anchors, right? I anchor a lot. So, of course, I had been in, right, and already had saw that they'd made the changes. And I knew that it was probably a good idea to do that, right? I wrecked the places, they say. So I went round so that I knew my father was with me, who doesn't really like change very easily. Um, I, I knew that, so I prepared them. We were in the car and I said to him, now just to say, they have changed the layout of the place. And I could hear him going, huh? <laughs> and I said, but it's okay. I've mapped it in my mind, right? Because I know where we're going. And of course, did I not take him through the wrong the wrong door? I took him through the wrong entry door by a mistake. And I had to laugh. I said to him, oh, it was so normal if you go through this door, but we've come through the wrong door, right? So we're actually going through the exit door, but don't worry. So next time we'll go through this one, he just looked at me as if to say, what are you doing to me? And, and we kind of like, mm, okay. Uh, and then we went down the aisles that he needed to go down. And we picked up the food and then we went for our coffee. And he then went and got a seat, right? Which is probably a good idea, right? He went and got a seat uh, because obviously that's what I need to, <laughs> need to have happen because I can't stand for any length of time. Um, not at the moment anyway. Um, and he's not very good at it either. So uh, he went, got a seat and I ordered. And the man behind um, saw me getting up the loyalty app um, and... I was looking uh, for how to bring up the scan code, the QR code. I couldn't find it. I was pressing everything and I couldn't find it. And this gentleman behind me was, oh, probably. Well, he told me actually eventually he said he was 75. And he, he looked over my shoulder and I said to him, can I help you? <laughs> and he laughed and he said, you need to press shop. And I said, how do you know I need to press shop? Uh, and I was joking with him, right? Uh, anybody knows me, I use humour a lot. And he said, if you want the code, you need to press shop. However, if you want the rewards, and he started telling me all of this. And I said to him, oh, I said, you're obviously very technical. And he went, no, he says, it's just I've been down this road. Uh, he said, and the old one, and I'm like, who's the old one? He was talking about my dad. And the old one, he's he's already seated, so you better hurry up. And I said, listen, <laughs> I don't refer to my, my father as the old one. And he just laughed, he started laughing. And he said, well, he's probably the same age as me. And I said, well, I said, I know he looks it. I said, but he's actually... He's actually a bit older than you, he said, but he's a young person at heart. And he started laughing. Um, I managed to get the QR code up and paid for the tea and the coffee. Away, away I went, joined my father. Uh, the man's waving to me as he's leaving. My dad says, have you got a friend there? And I said, I think so. <laughs> and he started talking, right, about how you can get caught up, right? You can get caught up in things that happen. And that's why I'm having this conversation about frame of mind, right? How important it is, you know, if we don't work in a frame of mind, if we don't process what we're thinking and how we're feeling, we can very easily go into ruminating. And one of the most common things I get asked about, particularly with clients and at trainings, is how do I stop myself catastrophizing, overthinking, getting really anxious, having those worry, stress thoughts? How do I stop myself doing that? And it's about our scripts, isn't it? We have scripts in our mind and we have these pathways, neural pathways that our brain creates. And there are certain scripts that we have that our brain forms that when we have regular tasks that we do. Like if you go to the dentist, uh, if you go to the doctors or if you 
um, or going shopping or, you know, if you're taking a particular walk that you do every day, you don't have to learn to do that all the time because these are automatic things. So you develop a script. It's like driving a car. If you drive a car and then you take a holiday and then you come back, you don't have to relearn every time you get in the car how to learn to drive. The only time you have to relearn something is if you've had an interruption. Now, if you become really unwell or you have some kind of health condition and whether it's your confidence, right, or whether you've had some kind of injury, right, maybe a brain injury or something like that, you're having to relearn something like relearn to walk or relearn to talk or relearn, you know, to drive or motor, use your motor senses, you know, um, your muscular senses, uh, if you have learned a task, riding a bike, learn to swim, anything automatic like that, then it's something that you pick up very easily. You've got muscle memory, don't you? And you have, you know, a sense of scripts that your brain then goes, oh, I remember this. You might wobble on a bike. You might automatically start going, hold on a minute. Right, do I remember this? And you might have to stop and think. It might not be as smooth a journey if you haven't done it for a while. There might be new steps if it's changed or been changed up. But you'll still be able to do it. If it's something similar, it's not the same. You might have to stop and process or figure it out slightly. But you might be able to do it. Yeah? Scripts are there. That our brain is amazing. And could do these things. If we are learning to do something new, we have to actively be in the moment and process it. If we're learning a new subject, if we're studying something, we have to actively think and process. We're more likely to retain if we write it down. And often people, when they're learning something, they write it, they speak it out, they talk it, they repeat and repeat and repeat. And then they, they suck it in, retain it, don't they? The memory, the information. It's your semantics, your episodic memory, different types of memory, depending on what you're doing. Your procedural memory, episodic memory. Lots of different types of memory. I loved studying the brain and studying memory as a subject when I I did my psychology degree. I loved it. I did some research studies. I also did a a bit of a research study on altruistic behaviour. That's another story. Anyway, let's stay focused here before I get too distracted. But when we talk about, you know, how we think, and how to retain information and how to process our thoughts and our feelings, regulate our emotions, and how to be able to keep ourselves with our words, process our words, choose our words carefully, and be able to make sure that the words that we use, the words we receive and the words that we give, are mindfully considered. Sometimes people are very good with communication. I work in communication. I will be careful with how I say things often within my practice because I want to make sure that I am working in a the most productive and most health the most helpful way with my clients. So I will say things in a way that I feel that will work the best for my clients. I'll present things to my clients in a way that then they can go, oh, right, that is how I feel. How did you know that makes more sense to me? Now you say it that way, a light bulb, it clicks, it makes, that feels, I couldn't quite get that in my head. Now, now I get it, right? And that's what it's about. If we understand and start processing our words and what we're thinking and how we're feeling, then it becomes easier. 
for us, if we're more reflective, is this making sense? Sometimes people use music to express their feelings. Lyrics, poems. Choosing our words, using our words in a way within our internal frame, within our mind, really helps our brain to then point us in the right direction. Words are powerful. Words have meaning. And the words we use are meaningful to us. And they either drive us forward or they keep us stuck. Or they hold us back. When we tell ourselves, that's hard. I can't. I want not to. That's not for me. I'm not good enough. I'll never get that. I can't be bothered. Maybe one day. Not now. When we constantly say, I'm sad, I'm down, I'm depressed. That's what we get more of. I'm not good. No one cares about me. I'm invisible. When we constantly tell ourselves these things, that's what we create as our identity. Even the people around us are telling us, you're amazing. I love you. You bring so much joy. You're happiness to me. I find you light up a room. I wish I had your ability to draw people in. You're the most trustworthy person. I feel so honoured to have you in my life. People are telling you that they love you, they care about you, and you go, oh, I know, but you're just saying that, or... That doesn't really matter. Or, but I don't feel that. What you do is, you dismiss it. You negate it. You undermine it. You diminish it. You push it away. You tell that person that their words, the meaning in their words, has no power. They're not empowering you not letting them in. The good that they're trying to do here, you negate, you dismiss. Words have meaning. Choose your words. Choose the words that you allow in. If someone is offering you words to elevate you, to lift you up, to support you, to encourage you, to notice you, to say you're visible, to show you love, to give you confidence and self-esteem and self-worth. Why would you not say, I appreciate that? You see me, you notice me. I value that. I respect what you say. I trust what you say. I know you have my best interests at heart. I'm letting that in. That is part of a foundation for me to build on. I will see that as a strength for me. I will start seeing me more, better, do better. I will start building myself up. I am. I choose to be. I will be. I will care more for me. 
I will be an inventor of my identity more. I will be the hero of me. I will start saying kinder, more compassionate, more caring, more considerate, more thoughtful words to me, words to me about me. No longer will I put me down. Whenever I ask people that self-talk that you give yourself that should be your own best champion, that self-talk that you give yourself that should be, not could, but should be your own best champion, that should be the support, that trusted support that gets you through each adversity and each day and each embraces you and allows you to enjoy the joy in life as well as the struggles to get you through. That self-talk that's doing everything but that. Would you give it to the person you love the most? I'm usually met with horror. People always say to me, I could never give how I talk to myself to the person I love the most because I don't care enough about me. I don't love me enough. I don't care or trust in me, believe in me enough. I talk to me about me in a very uncaring way. If you wear your own best champion, you are that hero. You are inventing and being invited to you. If you were lifting and elevating yourself up, how would that script look now? Choose your words wisely. Rating that script and then that script being the script you live by, reframing that script where you're being kind, compassionate, caring, forgiving yourself when you don't get it right, supporting yourself, encouraging yourself, talking kindly to yourself, encouraging and motivating, not constantly doubting, putting yourself down, self-sabotaging, minimalizing things, Putting things off when you know you need to take action. Not trusting in yourself, not believing in yourself, knowing when things are not good for you, but you still do it anyway. Keeping yourself in situations that you know is not working for you, but you just do it because it's familiar. Your voice goes, I don't think so. You are your hero. You have your best interest now. I am worthy. I am strong. I will not settle for anything other than what I deserve. I deserve the best. I am now reaching out, taking the best. I will address these issues. I will say no more and I'll demand that behaviours change. Well, Insist that they're followed through those changes and if they don't, then there will be consequences that I will follow through on. If I need to walk away, I will not stay. If I need to walk away, I will not stay and I will follow through. I choose me. If I choose me, and I am the best version of me, then I am the best version for everyone else in my life. They get the real me. And no longer will people say, will the real me stand up? Because I'll be authentic. I will bring the real me to wherever I am. 
People will know who I am because at work or if I'm retired, wherever I go, people will know that I they get who I am. Every time they have a conversation with me, there isn't a different version. It's me. Genuine. Real and authentic. That's the real me. Choose our words wisely. Self-talk. People ask me, how do I feel better? How do I start working on lifting my anxiety? How do I start addressing depression? How do I start managing my anxiety? How do I start not feeling so stressed? And I always ask them, how are you feeling? How do you feel that way? And they say, I don't know, know. it just is. And I say, no. What's causing it? What are you saying to yourself? What do you tell yourself every day for you to be feeling? What I think affects how I feel. How I feel affects what I do. What are you thinking? What are you telling yourself? What what are you saying to yourself every single day that's telling you? And remember, there are emotions that we all have. Human emotions. We all get low, depressed, sad, anxious, frustrated, angry. We all have different emotions. That's what makes us human. That's what makes us human. But it's what you do with it that matters. Point your brain on a different time frame. Point your brain and start looking at your mind script. So that you start doing things to make sure that you are giving yourself the better, best in your life. Managing your sleep better. Making sure you get good sleep. Making sure that you exercise. Making sure you're eating healthily. Connecting well. Having good Strong connections and investing in you. Whether it's growing, having hobbies and interests, meditation, mindfulness, diaries, journaling, Pilates, whatever it is you do, dancing to music, writing music, expressing yourself, painting, drawing, whatever you decide to do, express all your emotions in a way that's healthy and constructive. Interact and engage in a healthy way. Be playful. Laughter. Enjoy. Because life has a finite time. And we owe it to ourselves to see it's precious and to enjoy surely the life we have with the people we have and if you don't like the people you have with you right, we need to do something about that because sometimes we have to engage and enjoy and look at the things that we have rather than focusing on the things we don't have invest in you it's a mindset that we need to do Thanks for listening to me. Hopefully you've found me going live and having a talk about mindset and self-talk and our words and how powerful they are. We can empower ourselves and empower other people around us by choosing the right words. Words matter. Words are powerful. Have a fantastic weekend. This is Catherine Gallagher. This is CMG Talk. Remember to like, share and follow. And remember, 
that if you don't want to miss out in any of the episodes, it's really important that you do follow. Take good care and let's catch up soon. I will be dropping another episode through. And if you follow, then you'll make sure you don't miss out. If there's a particular subject you want me to talk about, remember you can always drop me an email, stepupcmg at xln.co.uk. Thanks again. Take care. And I will be talking about something completely different next time. I always like to change it up. And um, I don't like to be too, (laughs) yeah, I don't like to be too predictable. Okay, so there will always be subjects I'm talking about that are on point that come up. And uh, yeah, until next time, let's get talking.